everyone. Welcome to the day three of prepare to pass a file. Uh, first of all, let me take the questions from your side. So any questions regarding the previous topics? Any questions? Kaf, you can go to the acca.campusinsight.net and you can make your account from that site. Go to acca.campusinsight.net. Acca acca.campusinsight.net. Go there and prepare your own account. On campus insights, it is set the connection loss and I have lost my work. How do I get the result of the questions? Here, uh, I suggest you for this email at info at campus in dot net email at okay so you will get any technical issue regarding the campus insight or uh, the access of questions you can contact at info at campus insight dot net the people Managing there are very popular. First of all, any questions regarding the yesterday talk? Any question? I presume there is none. So, uh, judo company question. Far do you have the question right now? Okay, I have to search that question, the judo company. So, if in a break I have been able to hunt that, I will discuss that. And Abish Shah is talking about the non-critical factor, constraint rather. So the non-critical constraint is a constraint which is not fully utilized at the optimum production plan. Constraint which is not fully utilized. In the other words, we can say that greater than the optimum utilization. Okay. I had made a WhatsApp group for it has just been shared by the ACC, ACC organizers. So you can access the WhatsApp group and then we can have a group discussion as well. So if there will be any question, you can put it on that group. It. And it's not only me who will be. I would love the other group members to participate. Someone ask the question. Okay. Now, let's start my today's session. You see me now? Um, Mina Thabat has asked me that 
I couldn't log in yesterday. Could I get the recorded video? So yes, you can have access to that. Uh, now I expect that the technical aspect of this session will be handled by my team, which is the organizers from ACCA and one of my moderator. So I will be talking more about the specific F5 related queries today. So first of all, uh, the topic that we had covered by yesterday was majority on was majority on uh, the area which are likely to appear in section B. Okay, so if I could talk about it was activity based costing, target costing. Life cycle costing, throughput, and then we have CVP, pricing. So all these six topics are more likely to appear in section B type questions. So my focus in the campus insight question was the objective test and OT cases. But as far as linear programming topic is concerned that we had discuss at the end end and then we all will also discuss the relevant costing today so these such questions are more likely to appear in section c type i will be working more on the spreadsheet format or the word processing format so i've is according to the nature that is likely to appear in the final exam. Okay. Now, this is the question. This is a linear programming question. And the, first of all, we should read the requirement. And the requirement is find by appropriate calculation the optimum product mix and related maximum contribution could be earned by CS. So we have to calculate the optimum production mix and related maximum contribution. So this is the first requirement. Now this question is on linear programming. So I request you first of all to read the information. Okay. I'm muting my mic so that you can read the information. So this is the first question. This is the background information. I had just read the requirement. So this is the question of linear programming. And what you all have to do is you first need to read the background information and like this. Okay.
So have you read the question? Now, this is the question on linear programming. And if I could recall you these steps, the first step was to define variables. So in the question, the examiner himself have de defined the variables and the two variables are W and L. W stands for work suits and L stands for long suits. Then, the next step is to develop constraints. So this step has also been, been performed by the examiner in this question. So we have the constraint of Taylor time, which is 7W plus 5L must be less than or equal to 35. And same for fabric and production work. Third step is to develop the objective function. So the examiner has also provided objective function. The fourth step is to prepare a graph. An examiner has also prepared the graph. The final step is that we find the op optimum point. So examiner has also pointed me the optimum point. So this is the optimum point. This is the optimum point on the graph. Okay, so everything has already been provided to us. Now, what we have to find according to the requirement is, we have to find that how many units of W, how many units of W and how many units of L. So the Y axis represents L can be produced at point P. What would be my optimum production plan? So if I could analyze that, that at point B, the two constraint lines are Taylor time, the T line and the fabric time F line. That means my two constraints are, let me write Taylor time and the other constraint is Fabric time. Let's open the space a bit for you. Okay. Now, the constraint for the Taylor time is it was 7W plus 5L must be less than or equal to. 35. And the constraint for is 2w plus 2l must be less than or equal to 1200. Okay? So this is the constraint. I will call it this as equation 1 and the Fabry equation as equation 2. Now, yesterday, equation 2 was already fully solved. So that was easy for me to put the value of equation 2 in equation 1. And the answer. But this will not be the case in this question. Not be the case in this question. So in such situations, what you have to do is 
you have to equate at least one value. So either the value besides W or besides L. This is your choice. I am equaling the value of L. And how do I do that? Now, equation 2 represents 2L and equation 1 represents 5L in the equation. So if I multiply the equation 2 with 5 and equation 1 with will get 10 L. So what I do, I will multiply equation 1 with 2 and equation 2 with 5. Okay? So what will happen then, the same equations will now be what? Let's add it that. If I multiply the equation 1 with 2, so this will be 14w plus 10l must be less than equal to 7000. What I have done is that I have multiplied the complete equation with 2. And for equation 2, I will be multiplying it with 5. So it will be 10W plus 10L must be less than or equal to 6000. So this will be the equation. Now when I subtract it, I will get the answer of 4W must be less than or equal equal to 1000. Okay? Have you all understood that? Yes, Salma, you are doing correct with me. So have you all understood that? Yes, so when we calculate the value of W, it will be 250. Uh, Salman has asked me that can we refer and multiply? Yes, we can. We can, but I feel that it will be difficult for a general student to do it in spreadsheet, especially the whole equation. So that's why I had avoided that. Now what we do, we put the value of W in any of the equation, either it is in equation 1 and equation 2. Okay. So how it will be if I put it in equation 2 suppose, so the equation will be 2. I am just writing this equation for you although I don't need to. So the equation will be 2 into the value of W250 plus 2L equals 1200. This is the equation that I will be solving. Now, although you don't need to require to calculate this, you don't need to calculate 2 into 250 plus 2L equals to 1200. You don't need to write the whole equation. And so you, if you can calculate it, you can directly calculate the formula. And for, as far as formula is concerned, so L should be equals to 1200 minus 2 into 250 and then I will be dividing it by 2. Sorry, I haven't used the equation of equal. So this will be 350. 
you can calculate the value of L directly. Okay. So my production plan will be 250 units of W and 350 units of L. Now in the question, we have also been asked to calculate the contribution. So the contribution will be 48 W plus 48. So it will be equal 48 into 250 plus 40 into 350. So the total contribution over here is 26,000. So this is the answer. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. The B requirement says calculate the schedule price of the fabric per meter and the tailor time per hour. So we have to calculate the shadow price of both fabric per meter and the tailor time per hour. And then we also need to evaluate whether the offer of the tailor time to work 500 extra hours provided that they are paid three times their normal rate, that is $4.5 per hour is acceptable or not. So we also need to evaluate that. Now, to solve this question, first of all, Remember that we will be calculating the shadow price term by time. So first of all, let's calculate the shadow price of uh, fabric. Okay. Shadow price of fabric. Now to do that, once again, we will be using the two same equation. One is tailor time. I am writing T for that. And the other one was fabric time. And I am writing F for that. The equation for the tailor time was, what I can do is, I can simply copy and paste it. I will copy from the previous slide. Go to the next slide and I will paste it. So this will be easy task for me. Now, to calculate the shadow price, what I will be do, doing, I will add one resource of fabric. So I will not write 6,000. Rather, I will use, sorry, I have chosen the wrong equations. So let me correct that. The original equations was 7W plus 5L for fabric. So First copy and then paste it over here. So this is the correct equation. So it will be 1201. I have add one extra resource for fabric. Okay. Now, similarly, I will calculate the value of W and L with the similar way that I will make equation 1 and 2, then multiply 1 with uh, 5 and equation, sorry, equation 1 with 2 and equation 2 with 5 and then solve the value of W and L. So, as usual, this will be my equation one this is equation two so i will multiply equation one with two and equation 
टू विथ फाइव देन आई विल हैव द आंसर ऑफ दिस विल बी फोर्टीन डब्ल्यू प्लस टेन एल बस बी लेस एन इक्वल टू सेवन थाउजेंड एंड दिस विल बी टेन डब्ल्यू प्लस टेन एल बस बी लेस एन इक्वल टू सिक्स थाउजेंड फाइव एंड एज यू विल आई विल देन सब्रैक्टेड when i subtract because both has 10l so this will be cancelled out my resultant answer will be 4w is equal to 995 so w should be equal to how much 995 by 4 so it will be 248.75 Is my working correct? Yes, Salman, it is correct. Jawad Mahmood has asked me a very good question, and that will be very knowledgeable for you. How can we insert or delete cells? I can do it on Excel, but can't do do it here. So, dear, this option is not available to you. Neither in the Campus Insight, nor in the actual real time exam of ACC. But there is a key tip that you can do that. So, for example, if I have to insert a row between these two equation. Between these two equations, what I will be doing that I will first select the whole plotted area below that. Then I will cut that equation. So to cut, I will use the command Control X, Control X, and then one line below I will paste it. So by this way, I have an additional one row. so you can do this by that way okay now as we will what we do we will put the value of w in any of the equation and i am once again putting it in the fabric equation so it will be equal 1200 equal minus Two into two four eight point seven five, and then I will divide it by two. So it will be three fifty one point seven five. This will be the value of L. Okay. आर थी एनी फॉन्ट साइज और कलर प्रिस्क्राइब फॉर पेपर और इट्स आर चॉइस असर इट इज टोटली अप टू यू देर इज नो प्रिस्क्रिप्शन ऑन दी फॉन्ट साइज और कलर बट आई स्ट्रॉन्गली सजेस्ट जस्ट बी सिंपल डोंट ट्राई टू मिंगल विथ टू मेनी ऑप्शन अदरवाइज योर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑन द एग्जाम विल लॉस्ट सो जस्ट बी सिंपल If you can see my working, I have not used any of the tools above. Shafiq Rahman has asked me, "Could you explain again, please, the calculation of L?" Dear, if I could go back, I have put the value of W in that equation, right? This is the similar way that I, I have calculated the L. But this time around, what I have done is that I have put the formula directly. So if I could open the formula, 
तो दिस विल बी दूमुला ओके वैल्यू ऑफ डब्ल्यू इन द इक्वेशन ऑफ फैब्रिक एंड देन कैलकुलेट द बैलेंसिंग वैल्यू ऑफ एल हाउ डिड आई डू दैट हेयर इज द फॉर्मल ओके नाउ टू कैलकुलेट द शेडो प्राइज वॉट नेक्स्ट आई विल डू एज आई विल कैलकुलेट द टोटल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन सो द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन will be how much it was the equation for contribution was it was 40 w plus 40 so it will be equal 48 into the units of plus 40 into the units of l so this will be टू सिक्स जीरो वन जीरो यस सलमान इट इज टू सिक्स जीरो वन जीरो नाउ टू कैलकुलेट द शेड्यूल प्राइज द टेक्निक विल बी the technique over here will be the total contribution after adding one resource minus the original total contribution which was 26000 so the shadow price will be 10 okay now similarly you can calculate the shadow price of labor and you can do that right in front of the on in the calculation of shadow price of fabric you can do that right in front of that so you will be able to calculate the shadow price of Labor or tailor time similarly. So I'm doing it quickly for you, presuming that you can calculate it. Yes. So these were the two equations. But this time I will add one resource of labor, and I will not add. the one resource of fabric i will then multiply the equation 1 with 2 and equation 2 with 5 so you can see that in spreadsheet format what i can do is i can quickly perform my task by simply copying and paste it so this time it will be 7002 Will be six thousand. Then I will subtract it. So this time my four W should be is equals to one thousand two. and then finally i can calculate w with 1002 divided by 4 it will be 250.5 and now in the similar way i can calculate the value of l the value of l will be Twelve hundred minus two into two fifty point five whole divided by two, so it will be three forty nine point five. I can then calculate the contribution once again. I will copy and then paste it. I will get the contribution of twenty six thousand four. 
I can also get the shadow price by simply copying and pasting. So my shadow price for Taylor time is four. Yes, Javad, it is four. Exactly. Now, we have also need to answer that whether the CES should accept the offer of overtime at three times the normal rate or not. So, we can answer it over here that detailer is demanding the early rate of 4.5 which is three times higher than the normal rate of 1.5. This means the premium for extra hours are three because 4.5 is the overtime rate 1.5 is the basic in that so the premium rate is three dollar per now if you could remember that the shadow price was four dollar of labor so i can write as the shadow price was dollar four, this demand is lower than what we can actually afford. So, the demand for premium should be accepted. But this demand should be for limited number of hours. So this will be the answer of requirements. Okay. Now, this is a very interesting question. And I don't know how to explain it in the webinar. Let's see. It says calculate the new optimum production plan if maximum demand for W falls to 200. So, what happened over here is that my current demand is actually 400 units. Have you all looking at that? Okay. Now as per the requirement, it says calculate the new optimum production plan if maximum demand for W falls to 200. So, if that line, can you see the, my mouse cursor? Can you see my mouse cursor? Over here. This mouse cursor.
Okay. So this means if currently demand is of W is 400. So if the demand falls to 200, then this line will shift to 200. So this line will be over here. I cannot now portrait my D line in this software, but this is, this should be over here. Okay. This should be over here. Okay. So if I portrait my line over here, what will happen is that B will no longer be point. Rather, my optimal point will be somewhere where I have put my cursor. Somewhere at that point. And are you all looking at my cursor? My mouse cursor. So in such situation, my optimum point will be at point at the line of W, which is 200 and the fabric time at line W, because there will be a new line of W, which is passing through there. So it will be the W line, the W constraint, the demand of W constraint and the fabric time. So now my new equation. Demand W and fabric. These will be my two equations. Now the equation will be W must be less than or equal to 200. And as far as fabric is concerned, it will be how much it is? It will be the equation of fabric was over here it was 2w plus 2l. 2w plus 2l must be less than or equal to 1200. Uh, Asad Rafiq has asked me that why not labor time? Asad, if you can look, my line will be this one. So this will be my point where my cursor is. This will be my point, optimum point. Okay. Now, at this point, there will be one line W. One line W, the new line W. And the other line, if you can see, is the line of fabric. So that is why I use fabric, not the tailor. Okay. So I will have to produce the new optimum point with this situation. So this will be equation one and this will be equation two. This is a fairly simple one. So I will just simply put the value of equation one in equation two this time. So and then I will calculate the balancing value of L so it will be how much equal 1200 minus 200 into 2 divided by 2. So it, L is, should be equal to 400. L should be equal to 400. contribution will be equal 48 W so 48 into 200 plus 40 L so number of units for L is 400 so it will be 25,600.
So this will be the answer for part D, which says calculate the new optimum production plan if the demand of W falls to 200. Rather, I should say this total contribution was not required, by the way. Because in the exam question, we have all only been asked to calculate the new production plan. So the new production plan is 200 units of W and 400 units of L. So this was not required by the way. Okay. Any question? Now, as what we did yesterday, that after every topic, we will be having a little break. So now I will be moving my to my new topic, which is relevant costing. But before I could start, Let's have a break of around two to three minutes. Okay, so just a couple of minutes break.
Okay, some back line. Uh, Aram has asked me, so please guide for the table question that I start. Sorry, I didn't get that question. So can you please repeat it? And So now I will be starting the topic of relevant costume. Here I have to get back to that specific question, the tablet company, and then I will have to see which 66,000 you are discussing about. So currently I have no idea about that, but uh, I will try that in my next week. I will come up with your answer, okay? I have to look for that specific tablet company question. Now the relevant cost. So the cost is relevant if it has three important criteria. One is future oriented. The other one that is that it should be cash flows. And finally, it should be incremental. Future means that the cost or income should not be incurred in past. Instead, this the such cost has to be incurred at some point at, in future. Cash means that there should be some cash inflow or outflow due to that. And also incremental means that there should be change. Now what happened in the in case of decision is that at least we have two options. We have two options. So option one and option two. Now for a cost to become an incremental, it is important that its value should be different in both of the options. So for example, if in option one, the value of a specific cost is $10 and in option two, the value of such cost is suppose $11. So the cost is different over there. That means such cost is relevant. This is relevant. Provided the other two conditions of cash flow and future cash flow met. However, if this value is same, if this value is same, for example, $10 in the option one and $10 option two, then because there is no change in the cost, so such cost will be irrelevant. They may also be included at the opportunity cost. So sometimes what happens is, we have two options. So we have option one, which gives us the benefit of say $50. And then we have option which gives us the benefit of say $30. Now as we choose option 1, the, that will also mean that I will reject option 2. And rejecting option 2 will also mean that I will also lose the benefit of this $30. This $30 will be lost. So this loss benefit will be known as the opportunity cost. Uh, Mama Shahzad Akhtar has asked me to discuss the incremental cost discussion once again. Shahzad, incremental cost is very easy. You have to see that whether a specific cost have the same value in both the options or not. For example, in the case of fixed cost, fixed overheads, 
we have a decision whether we should increase our capacity or not. So increase production is one option and do not increase production. Let me change the color. Oops, sorry. Okay. So increase the production is one option and do not increase production is the other option. And one of the costs that I'm considering it, whether it is relevant or not, is suppose the fixed cost. And I knew that the fixed cost or, for example, the supervisor salary, if I increase my production, he will, his salary will be $10,000. But if I don't increase the production, his salary will even then be $10,000. So in both of these options, as you can see, the salary of the supervisor is same. So we can say there is no different in both of these options. So there is no element of incremental. So this will be irrelevant. So the cost to become relevant, it, it is important that in both options, its value should be different. This is increment. Okay. Incremental means change. No opportunity, uh, Ramiz Ahmed asked me, sir, where will $30 go in opportunity cost? Will be added in, no, not add, add, rather it will subtract because $50 is my benefit, it is my income and $30 is the benefit for cost. so it is the cost. So cost should be subtracted from my benefit, so my net answer will then be $20, not $80, okay? Now, let's discuss or mention these three different costs that if we find in this scenario that there is some cost, some cost means past cost. If we find some committed cost or apportioned cost, this will all be irrelevant. So we will not include in our calculation. Okay. Now, how to identify a relevant cost of material? It is important to remember that the principle behind the relevant costing is same, that it should be incremental, it should be future oriented, it should be cash flows. This is just a helping tool to identify a relevant cost of material. So first of all, we will ask that is material available in stock? If the answer is no, then the relevant cost should be the material purchase cost. But if the answer is yes, then we will ask another question. Is material of regular use or not? Now, if the answer is yes, that the material is in regular use, the relevant cost will be material replacement cost. For convenience, let me tell you that these two both will be same. Okay. Both will be same and that is the current price. All right. So if the, if the answer is no, that such material is not of a regular use, then we will use higher of alternate benefit and the residual value, the scrap value. We will choose the higher between the two values. And if in the question, no alternate benefit is provided, then of course we will be using the residual value automatically. Because there is nothing to compare them. Okay? So this is 
tool a helping flow gram to identify a relevant cost of material. Now let's see the example. This example is a bit distorted. Uh, so for that, just let me rephrase it so that you can view it clearly. So this is the situation. We have to jump it again. So this is the example. Okay. In a contract, we require two different kinds of material. One is material X and the other one is material Y. We require 400 kg of X and 200 kg of the following data is available. So we have 300 kg in stock. Historic cost is $2 per kg for X and 50 cents per kg for Y. Do remember that. This cost, this historic cost will always be irrelevant. This will be irrelevant because it is a past cost. So we have also been provided with the current purchase price and the scrap value. X is no longer used by the company. X is no longer used by the company. Whereas Y is regularly used for other products. So let's first calculate the relevant cost of material X. So for we require 400 kg and the first question is whether the material available in stock. So my answer is for the 300 kg it is yes. But for 100 kg it is no. Because there is only 300 kg in stock. Now for the material which is not available in stock, its relevant cost will be the current purchase price which is $3. Which is 3. So this will be 3 into 100, 300. Now let's cover the other part. Now if the material is in straw, we will ask another question that whether the cost is of regular use. So if you can see that we have been told that it is no longer used by the company. So the answer will be no. Answer will be no. Now in that case, the relevant cost will be higher of alternate benefit and scrap value. As there is no alternate benefit provided, so the relevant cost will be the scrap value which is 2.2. So I will multiply it with 2.2. So this will be 660. So the relevant cost of material X will be 960. Yes, Fahad, you are doing it correctly. Okay. Now let's do it for material Y. Material Y. So the first question is, is material available in stock? So the answer is yes. Is the material of red? So the answer is also yes. That means the relevant cost will be the current purchase price, which is $2. So this will be 200 multiplied by 2, that is 4. So this will be the relevant cost of Y and that will be $400. Okay. So yes, Punil Lalji, it is correct.
well 100 unit will be will remain in the stock i am calculating the relevant cost of 400 kg of x and 200 kg of y so this is important the remaining 100 units of y will be used for my other products okay so i should not be concerned about that mm -hmm. yes father it should be 2 into 200 now let's see similarly how to identify the relevant cost of labor so the first question is is the labor idle or at spare capacity so if it is at spare capacity the relevant cost of labor will be zero but if it is not at the spare capacity we will ask can my can the other labor be hired can extra and this can be done by two ways either to hire a new labor or to ask my existing labor to work over time. So if any of, in any of this situation, my extra labors can be hired, then the labor cost will be the hiring cost. So if they are working on the uh, with over time, then their relevant cost will be over time pay. But if it cannot be higher, then the relevant cost will be rate paid plus contribution for coal. Because in such situations, we will have to shift our labor from the existing production to perform this contract, to perform this job. Okay? So once again, it is a helping tool to identify the labor cost. Now let's see the example. So APS is deciding whether to undertake a new contract. If I can once again rearrange a few data for you. So this is over here. Fifteen hours of labor are required for the contract, so we have to identify the relevant cost of this fifteen hours. So I'm only concerned with this fifteen hours. Labor is currently at full capacity. So it says that the labor is at full capacity. Now. This is the cost card for product X, which gives the contribution of $22. So what is the cost of using 15 hours of labor for the contract? So in this, there is no information on hiring the new labor or the overtime. That means we will assume that we cannot hire them. So labor is not at spare capacity, neither we can hire that. Hence the relevant cost will be rate per hour plus contribution per hour of product X. Now the rate per hour is $6. So here it is 6. And the contribution is $22 for 5 hour job. This is the contribution per unit of X, but this product X requires 5 hours. That means per hour labor is generating 4.5 dollars. That means am I correct for in calculating 4.5 by the way? I think I have not calculated it correctly. It's 4.4? It's 
Yes, thank you. I also thought that. So thank you very much for rectifying me. So yes, it will be 4.4. 4.4. So that means my relevant cost per hour will be 10.4. Now for 15 hours, it will be how much? Anyone? Abhi Shah has asked me 4.4 how? Abhi, if I divide 22 by 5, the answer will be 4.4 and not 4.5. Okay? I miscalculated it earlier. So many students, yes, per hour. It is per hour. So many students, Mustafa, Sara, Asad, Atiba, Hamza, Bilal, Iram, Mehdi Hassan, Shafiq, Puneel Lalji, all of them has told me that it is 156. So I really appreciate your help. Because this will let me know that you are all working with me. Elizabeth, thank you. So, thank you very much for your support. I really appreciate that. So, have you understood the calculation of labor cost? The relevant labor cost. Okay. Now, let's see the decision to look out for. So, what happened in such situations that we have different decisions. So we have a make or buy decision, the outsourcing decision, closure decision, further processing decisions, or similar short-term decisions. Now the way to solve such decision is, first of all, we should analyze that what are the options. What are the options? Now, the second thing is, I will start evaluating with one option. Start evaluating with one option. And in that evaluation, I will be applying relevant cost principle on each cost and revenue. Okay. So for example, if we have to make, make or buy, then we have two options. Either we will make it or we will buy it. What we can do is we can start evaluating the one option only and that could be making it, for example. So I will be evaluating my question using the heading relevant cost of making the component. And then I will apply the relevant cost principle on each of them. And finally, I will get the Uh, Jawad Mahmood has requested me kindly do a question on idle time. Jawad, there won't be any information on that. So, for example, for example, if I just write it over here, that labor is currently at spare capacity. And then if he, if he has asked a question to calculate the relevant cost, I will say the relevant cost will be zero. There will be no relevant cost. That's it. Umar Yasin has taught me, please, is the WhatsApp group used to ask questions? It is, you can share your information, your experience with F5. You can ask questions on that group, but obviously not right now. I'm not looking at my mobile right now. Okay. I'm only looking at 
you can right now you can ask questions over here but it is when you are when we are not online or even as you can see uh, the last session will be on saturday so after that if you have any problem you can contact me on that salman has requested me that there are some questions on relevant cost of using machine in new project dear any such sit in any such situations we will go go back to the relevant costing principle that we will identify whether it is future oriented it is cash flow or it is incremental okay sara ibrahim has requested me would you be doing any question on further processing to be honest i have included few questions in to discuss with you but right now i don't remember that it is on further processing or not but the way i will talk you the relevant costing principle it will be in such a way that whatever the short term decision is you should be able to do that okay so now let's move on so that is why i have shared you with the approach that first of all what we do we should have two options so for example if somebody if there is a question on further processing the two options will be whether i should further process it or do not further process it now these will be my two options so first thing is i have to identify these two options then i will start evaluating my question using the further process suppose and then apply the relevant cost principles on each cost or revenue let's discuss an example on that so this is the example and in this we have to prepare a statement of relevant cost and revenues and determine whether or not the proposal should be accepted so if you can analyze the requirement the two options are either we accept the proposal or reject it these are my two options and i will be evaluating my question that if i accept the project what will be my cost or revenue so this will be my starting point or to start the question so please read the question and i will be coming back
So I hope you have read the information of the question. Have you? Have you? Okay. Now, as the such questions, this is a kind of a long question, and such questions appear in section C of the exam. So I will be doing it in the Microsoft Excel. Okay. So what you should do is first of all write the relevant cost of uh, what was the decision? So relevant cost of accepting the contract. It was a contract, I guess. Okay. So as you can see that I have started my evaluation from the accept point of view. Now what I do, I will quickly write all the income or cost headings. So I will make it bold. Just write the equation of dollar and all the possible headings and which were sales revenue. Then we have material X, material Z. So material X, material Z. Then we have labor. Depreciation of machine. Mm. Then we have variable overheads. And we also have fixed overheads. Okay. Now I will turn by turn assess its relevant cost or revenue. And in everything I will assess all the three key features which were what was the three key features? It was future oriented, it was cash flow and it was increment. Now in the information in the information there is no uh, data on sales revenue. That means I will assume and this you should be assuming in your final exam as well that the revenue provided is relevant. Okay. Now that means this 36,000 is relevant. There is no issue in that. Okay. Have you understood that all? Now. Let's talk about material X. So for material X, we have been told that material X cannot be used or sold for any other product. That means material X is available in stock, but is not of a regular use. Now the key point over here is because it is a bit different from what we had covered the flow of material diagram and that is that it would cost $200 to dispose of if the existing invent of the existing inventories. That means we have two options either to use in contract or no use in the contract. 
So it says that if I do not use in the contract, I have to spend $200 to dispose of. So this is my cost in case if I don't use that. If I don't use that. That means by using it, I will not have to spend $200 on disposal. So this is saving. So material X has a $200 of saving. Let's go on to the material Z. Each unit of new product uses 2 kilos of material Z. 2 kilos of material Z. So that means the total material Z is required over here is 12,000 into 2 because we have to produce 12,000 units. The company has entered into a long-term contract to buy 24,000 kilos at an average price of 37.5 cents. The current price is 17.5 per kilo. The material is regularly used in the manufacture of the company of other products. Now, because such material is of regular use, hence its relevant price should be 37.5 cents. So, I have to multiply it with 37.5 divided by 100. Why divided by 100? Because this is this value is in cents and not in dollars. So my calculation will be equal minus. Remember that in the relevant costing format, whenever there is a cost, I will use the sign minus so that it will be in negative. So equal minus 12,000 multiply by 2 multiply by 37.5 divided by 100. So the cost, the relevant cost of material Z is 9,000. Salman Shahid has asked me, why not multiplying with the current price? Dear, this is because uh, this is because we have a long-term contract. So although the material is available for me 17.5 cents but due to the nature of contract I have to buy such materials from a selected supplier who is supplying me at 37.5 okay so that is the reason um, Iram says is talking about the disposal cost that it is a call and it is not a revenue so she is not getting the point so dear the reason over here is that you see that you have to incur a cost if you do not use it in the contract. Okay. Now you are preparing a statement that what if you are using it in the contract. So you see by using it, you are saving this $200 cost. You are saving this $200 cost. Now, this is a saving because you are using it in a contract. So, it will be saving of $200, not the cost. Okay. By using material X in the contract, you are using material X in the contract. You are actually saving the disposal cost of $200. Now, because it is a saving, so it should be inflow. Okay. Uh, Hamza Shafakat has asked me, can you explain the negative sign again? Yes. Hamza, what I'm doing over here is whenever there's an inflow and income, I will be calculating it in positive. And whenever there is a cost, I will be doing it in ne with negative sign. So I've calculated all my value using minus sign because material Z was a cost. Iram is saying that, but we are not using material X. Iram, we are using material X. We are using material X. In this contract, you see, in, by using in this contract, we are saving $200. Okay. 
ओके The question slide. The question slide is in front of you. Salman, material X is not a cost. That is what I am explaining to you, people. That material X is not a cost. It is a saving graph. Okay. Yes, material Z is in regular use, but you can see we have two different prices for that. We have two different prices. One is 17.5 and the other one is 37.5. Okay. So please understand the concept behind it. We cannot just make one point and go along with that in F5. Look at what it has written. The company has entered into a long-term contract into a long-term contract. Okay. Now, because we have a long-term contract, that means due to this contract, I have to buy it with a specific supplier who is delivering me for 37.5. I don't have the choice. Jawab Damood is saying that isn't it committed? No, it is not committed. I have agreed the price. I have agreed the price. But it is not that I have to buy it. Either I use it or not. Okay. The example for committed cost would be the rent, for example. Either I use the premises or I don't use the premise. I have to pay the rent. Okay. You know, let's concentration, concentrate on what the information is. And then look what I want to say. Uh, let me open my OneNote document. I have not opened today. Let me open that. So first of all, this is the material X, right? Material X. Now this material is no longer used right now. No longer required. no longer required because it is not used in any of the current currently not any of the contract currently not in any contract okay now now we have a contract now we have to perform a contract. So this is a new situation that now we have a contract. We have to decide. Now if we do the contract. We have two options for such contract. Either to do the contract or. Do not. That means if I do the contract. I will now be using material X in that. And if I don't, then obviously I will not be using material X in the contract. Now, if I don't, I have to pay $200 to dispose of material X. But if I do the contract, I don't need to pay the disposal cost of $200. Okay. So can I say that by doing the contract, I have actually saved the $200 disposal cost? Okay. 
Okay? Iram, are you seeing it? So this is the situation over here. So this is the situation over here. Okay? So that means by doing the contract, I have saved what I have to incur if I don't do that. Repeat it again. Okay. I have to raise, raise all of that. So first of all, it has said material X is no longer required. This is the current situation. So it is currently not in any contract. It is not used by the company. Now we have a contract to offer. And we have two choices, either to do that or either we don't. So if we don't do that, if we don't do the contract, that means I will not be using material X. I will not be using material X and I have to dispose of at $200. Right? But if I do that, I will be using material X for this contract. Okay. Now can I say that by using this, by using material X, I actually have saved $200. I actually have saved $200. So this $200 will be My saving for doing the contract, for doing the contract. Okay. Now I am working out the relevant cost of accepting the contract or doing the contract. So by doing the contract, I have saved $200. So it will be my income. Okay. Now let's discuss on the labor cost. So once again, there is no information on the labor. So generally, whenever there is a variable cost and there is no information, no hint of becoming it as irrelevant, you will always assume that it is relevant. So the labor cost of 10,000 will be relevant. Now let's talk about the depreciation of machine. So the depreciation of machine will be zero, will be zero. Okay. Why depreciation of machine is zero? Because depreciation is a non-cash cost. Now let's talk about variable overheads. So there is no information on the variable overhead. So we will once again also assume that it is relevant. So it will be 3600. So I'm writing it in minus. Now let's talk about the fixed overhead. So it is clearly mentioned over here that the fixed overhead are absorbed overheads. These are the absorbed overheads. And remember that. The fixed overheads are, the fixed overhead which are absorbed should always be irrelevant. So this will be zero. I had mis made one mistake. Let's see anybody has picked it or not. Yes, Hamza, very right. The last point was about labor, but I missed that. But I missed that. Okay. So let's rectify the labor cost. So the labor cost, I have to work it again. I am deleting it. The reason for this is the last point is the discussion on labor cost. Okay. 
So the new product requires the use of skilled labor, which is scarce. Scarce means limited. So that means they are not at spare capacity. If product T were not made, the labor could be used on other activities, which would yield a contribution of $1,000. So this is a situation that labor is not at the spare capacity, nor there is any labor that can be hired because there is no point written in point number four. So the relevant cost will be the rate paid, which is $10,000 plus the contribution for one of $1,000. So this will be 11,000. Okay. I missed that point. Mustafa Shabir has asked me that why fixed cost zero is zero. Dear, remember that if any cost is absorbed apportioned cost, we will assume that it will be zero because the actual total fixed cost will not change. This is just an apportionment. So apportioned cost, absorbed cost will always assumed to be zero. It will always assumed to be irrelevant. Okay. Yet it's not 80% absorbed, it is 80% of labor cost. So that is how it has calculated. It's 10,000 into 80%. So it's not just 80% which is absorbed, rather it is 80% of labor cost. Okay. So all the $8,000 is absorbed. So now once now we had discussed all the calculations, but if you can see in point three, there is some information about the machine cost which is not included in the format. So let's also write the machine cost. Machine cost. Now what is it? The machine which would be used to manufacture tea was bought new three years ago for $22,000. So this is a past cost. So this should be irrelevant. It had an estimated life of five years with a scrap value of $2,000. So once again, this was the estimated payback. If the new product is not manufactured, the machine could be sold immediately for $7,000. And if it is used for one year contract, it is estimated that it can then be sold for 4,000. So the point over here is that we have to sell that machine. In any case, we have to sell that machine. Okay. Now to sell that, if we do the contract, we can sell it for $4,000. So I will receive $4,000. I will receive $4,000. But if I don't use in the contract, I will sell it now for $7,000. Okay. Now that means by doing it, I will be receiving $4,000. But by not doing the contract, I would have received $7,000. So when I choose to do the contract, that means the benefit of receiving $7,000 will be lost. So this will be opportunity cost. Hence, my net result will be that I will have to suffer the $3,000 cost for doing it. Okay. So the machine cost will be $300. Now, once you have calculated all the relevant cost and revenue, what you should do is you will simply sum it like this. And the answer will be 9600. Okay. Now, the rule over here will be 
that if your answer is positive, you will accept the contract. If the answer over here was negative, you will reject the contract. Okay? You would have rejected the contract. Yes. I can try to explain the relevant cost of machine with the other way. So in the question it has said that I will receive from the machinery $4,000 by selling it if I do the contract. If I use it in the contract, I will sell it for $4,000. But I would have received $7,000 if I didn't use that. So that means by using this machine in the contract, I am receiving $3,000 less. So I'm actually losing $3,000 by using the machine. So this will be the, this $3,000 will be the relevant cost. Okay. Now let's move on to the campus inside and look for other questions on relevant costing. I've included two to three questions, but I will be doing only one out of them. I have tried to explain you the principle in calculating the cost. So the remaining two questions will be your home assignment. Okay. You have to do it in the campus inside. By the way, all of them are the past paper questions. So it's day three. This will be question number four. And this question says, calculate whether the Sunday opening incremental revenue exceeds the incremental cost over a year and on the basis reach a conclusion as to whether Sunday opening is financially acceptable. So first of all, the two options are either to open it on Sunday or do not open it on Sunday. So I will be evaluating with the option that is relevant cost of opening on Sunday. Okay. Let's make it bold. Okay, now what I do, I will read the background information. So I'm switching off my camera, muting my mic, so that you can concentrate on reading the background information.
So I hope you have all read the information, the background information. Have you? So any question in the background information? At least Abel has done that. So now, first of all, what we will be doing is preparing a format. So I'm writing the dollar sign over here. So the information that I find in the scenario was, there was the information on sales. Then there was the information on purchase cost. Then we have the information on labor, the information on bonus, the manager bonus. Then we have a information on heating and also on lighting. So these are the possible relevant information. As you can see, I have not used $420,000 per annum of the rent because it will be irrelevant. It will be irrelevant. The point of supervisor. Let me read. Where it is. It says the staff will have to be supervised by a manager currently employed by the company and paid an annual salary of $80,000. If he works on Sunday, he will take the equivalent time off during the week. So obviously he will be coming on Sunday, but for coming on Sunday, he will have some other day off. So it could be Saturday, it would be Tuesday. Okay. So manager is also available, assistant manager is available to cover for him at no extra cost. So there is no additional cost that we are paying to the assistant manager. He will also be paid a bonus of 1% of the extra sales generated on the Sunday project. So whatever the sales that we generate on Sunday, he will get the bonus of 1%. Okay. So he will get the bonus on that. So now let's discuss sales. So first of all, it has said that on average daily, 10,000 unit, oh sorry, $10,000 sales are made. But on Sunday, he is expecting that the sales will be 60% higher. So it will be 160%. But this, this sale will be only for one Sunday. For the whole year, as there will be 50 weeks in a year, that will mean for 50 Sundays, the total sales will be 800,000. So this will be the relevant sales rate. Now, I will discuss the purchase cost in the end. Let's now discuss how to identify the relevant cost of it. So the labor cost will be the number of employees. So how many employees will work? there will be five employees, five sales assistants. And each employee will work six hours. Okay. Now, 
each will be to each employee we will be paying 20 into 1.5 because 20 dollar per hour is the normal rate and on sunday we are paying at time and a half so it will be 20 into 1.5 But this is the labor cost for one Sunday only. As there will be 50 Sundays, so I will be multiplying it with 50. So the labor cost in total will be 45,000. Let's open it a bit for you. Now let's discuss the bonus. So the bonus is 1% on the sales on Sunday. So equal minus. And the sales on Sunday is 800,000. So I will simply multiply it with 1%. It will be how much? It will be 8,000. Let's now discuss the heating cost. So it will be equal minus the heating cost is $45 per hour. And number of hours will be 8, not 6. This is because in this scenario, it has said that the heating will come on 2 hours before the store opens. So the store is opening for 6 hours. That means the heater that we will be using is for 8 hours, 2 additional hours. But this will not be for whole year, whole 50 weeks, rather it will only be for 25 winter weeks as stated in the question. So the relevant cost of heating will be 9000. Finally, let's talk about the lighting cost. Now, the lighting cost is $30 per hour. And we will lit for 6 hours each Sunday. And there will be 50 Sundays. So the lighting cost will be 9000. So now I have calculated all the cost and income, the relevant cost and income, except purchases. So let's move on to purchases. Now in purchase, there is an element of discount. Okay, please repeat labor cost. Okay, I am just opening the formula. So in the formula, it is 5 into 6 into 20 into 1.5 into 50. So far, please let me know whichever you have not understood. Whole labor, well, there will be five employees, five sales assistant. Each work for six hours. So that means 30 hours per day. Each to each labor, we will be paying 20 hours into 1.5. Because we have to pay time and a half provided in the question. So that means we will be paying $30 per hour. And finally, we have 50 weeks, so I will multiply it with 50. All right. Okay. Now let's move on to the if Fanula Hussaini has said, please explain bonus. Dear bonus is very easy.
what is the percentage of bonus? 1% of extra sales generated on Sunday. So it, this will be 1% of the sales on Sunday. And on Sunday we have calculated the sale and that was 800,000. We have simply taken its 1%. Okay. Now let's discuss purchases. Now in purchases, there is an element of discount. So what we do, we will first calculate the amount of purchases in both situations that if we do not open on Sunday, what will be my annual purchase? And if we open on Sunday, what will be my annual purchase? So I'm writing the two heading. If I open on Sunday and if I don't open on Sunday. Okay. My purchases will be for two different proportions. One is from Monday to Saturday. And the other proportion is on Sunday. Now in the question we have been told that we have a profit margin of 30%, sorry, profit margin of 70%. That means in the other days we have a profit margin of, because the profit margin is 70%, that means the purchase cost is 30%. All right. Have you understood 30%? That means in the other days of the 10,000 sales, my purchase cost will be 30%. But this will be the purchase cost for each day. Now there will be six days in a week. Monday to Saturday will be six days. So I will multiply it with six. So this will be my purchase cost for a one week. And for whole year, there will be 50 weeks. So my total purchases is $900,000. Now if I don't open on Sunday, this will be same. This situation will be same. That I have to spend $900,000 on purchase cost. Now, what will be the purchase cost for Sunday? So if I do not open on Sunday, obviously my purchase cost will be zero on that. But what about the purchase cost on Sunday? So on Sunday, we had a sales of 800,000 multiplied by, now in the question we have been told, that the profit margin on Sunday is 20% lower. Now 20% lower means that my profit margin is not 70%, rather it is 50% on Sunday. And 50% profit margin means my purchase cost is also 50%. So this will be my purchase cost on Sunday for the whole year. Okay. So when I total it, if I open up it on Sunday, my annual purchase will be 1.3 million. But if I do not open it, my annual purchase will be 900,000. Now, because when I open up on, on Sunday, I will exceed my annual purchase of 1 million and in such situation I will be enjoying a discount. Which is how much? How much discount has been offered if I purchase, if my purchase is, is above 1 million dollar, it is 5%. So I will be enjoying a discount of 5%. 
if I open it on Sunday. So my discount value will be 65,000. But I do not have any discount if I don't. Because then my annual purchase will be less than $1 million and I don't have any discount. That means after discount cost, if I open out it on Sunday, is 1.235 million. And if I don't, it will be 900,000. Now that means by opening on Sunday, I have to bear an additional cost of how much? 335,000. So by opening on Sunday, my additional cost, my incremental purchase cost will be 335,000. So I will write equal minus because it is a cost and I will refer the calculation. 335,000. This will be my purchase cost. Farah has requested me to go over on Sunday. So here this is the calculation. The annual purchase cost, if open on Sunday, minus the discount that is available. Okay. This is the calculation of the discount. It was very simple. I have just multiplied the annual purchase with 5%. Now as Yet I have calculated all the relevant cost and revenue. Sorry, there is one more question. And we have said that this question is confusing and hard to understand. Will this be full in OTE in the exam? To me, to be honest, and to be very honest, I don't have any contact of examiner. Examiner is not signed up mine. So if I could have his phone number, I could have asked him that, do you plan to ask the question of relevant costing in this March 2018 attempt or not? And if you are planning to do that, will it be objective test or wrong question? If that examiner is so kind, I would have asked him that please tell me which kind of relevant costing will it be? And I will not be spending 15 hours in explaining the topic. Rather, I will take around 5 hours to solve all those questions that examiner will tell me. Okay? But unfortunately, I can't. This is the limitation. I can't. And this is the big problem. Okay? And as far as difficulty level is concerned, I think you have to practice. All you have to do is you have to understand the principle of relevant costing theory and you have to apply it turn by turn. I know sometimes it is confusing. And to be honest, it is. To be honest, it is. But remember that in the question, the mark is for part. So there will be some marks for calculating sales, some marks for purchase cost, some marks for labor, some marks for bonus, and so on. So if you make a clear format and try to solve the easier part. So as far as I can see, heating cost, lighting cost, bonus, labor cost, and even sales. All of these are very simple. The only difficulty was in the purchase cost and that too was due to discounts. So if you had prepared a good format and you had messed up with your purchases, but all the other things are correct, 
you will not lose so many marks. In fact, you will get majority out of them. Okay? So this is the technique that you will go towards your question. Okay? So every part that you perform in the question has some marks. So if you break your problem into simple ones and at least try to solve the simple questions, you will get at least quite a good mark, quite a handsome marks, maybe enough to pass your exam. And the only thing you have to do is you have a plan approach to your answer and that's it. Now, as I've done that, I will, what I will do, I will sum it. I will make a total. So the total will be equal sum bracket on D4 colon D9. This is just the other way to select the range. So the answer will be 394,000 positive. Yes, Mustafa and Abisha, 394,000 positive. Now, once again, as the answer is positive, so what should we do? We should accept the project of opening on Sunday. Okay? Have you all understood that? Yes, we will open on, on Sunday. So we have a few more questions on the relevant costing topic. I've included that. So for example, this is the question of the high life company. This question is very much similar to what we have done with uh, the question that we have done in, in my example. This question is very similar. Also, we have another question which is on proper company. Okay. So this will be your home assignment. You have to try these. All you have to do is you have to practice on applying the relevant costing. So once again, although we are pretty late with my target, but still I believe we all need a break. So let's have a break of five minutes and then we will discuss the next topic that is risk and uncertainty. Okay. So just a break of five minutes.
So now let's move on to the topic of risk and uncertainty. So first of all, we see that does the decision maker have past experience in this area or not? So in any area, if the decision maker, that means the person who is who should be making the decision, has past experience, then it is known as risk. Then it will be known as risk. But if you don't have the, the experience in the area, then it will be known as uncertainty. Okay? And it will be known as uncertainty. So this is the basic difference between risk and uncertainty. Now to reduce uncertainty, what we do? We do research. Because we don't have any experience. So to reduce uncertainty, we do research. And we have different research techniques. It can be grouped into two, desk research and field research. Okay? Now, to make a decision, especially where there is a, where there is a risk, the first point is to assess what is the attitude of a decision maker. What is the risk pref preference or the attitude of decision maker? And these can be either of the three. And that is risk seeker, risk covers, and risk neutral. So the decision maker is either risk seeker, it could be risk covers, and also it could be risk neutral. Now, as far as risk seeker is concerned, he will look for best outcome. A risk seeker is a decision maker, a person who looks for the best outcome. He is an optimistic. He is an optimistic. Now risk averse is a person who always looks for the worst outcome. So he is a pessimistic. And risk neutral is who makes decision based on most likely outcomes. Okay? Now, while making a decision based on risk and uncertainty, sorry, the risk decision, whether it is a risk seeker, it could be risk averse or risk neutral, we have to make a profit table for that. We have to make a profit table for that. Okay, I will show you the previous slide. So in profit table, you will find possibilities and the hint that there are possibilities is that generally we have been provided with the probabilities for each possibility. And then we have options so for example we have in this symbol table we have four options and four different possibilities four possibilities these four that means i will be having a matrix like this this
and that means there will be 16 different outcomes so if you count it it will be 16 and how it comes four options into four possibilities so this will be 16 so this is how some point of calculation will come so your profit table will look something like this Abish has asked me that how can we draw a table like this? Abhish, please wait for a while. I will be discussing that. Now, there are more chances that this question will be in part B. And if the question will be in section B, this table will be provided to you in the exam. So you are not required to prepare that. However, if the question is in part C, then you have to make that table. So we will be looking at how to prepare a profit table, especially in Microsoft Excel environment. Okay, so we will be doing that. But as far as if section B is concerned, then always re remember that this table will be provided to you. Okay. So now let's come that if this table is not provided to you. So this is an example. By the way, it was a past exam question. And from this example, we will be preparing the profit table. So please take around three minutes to read the information and then we will be preparing it, okay? I uh, hope you have read the information. So while preparing the table, what you first have to do is we have to write the options. So the two options in the question is, let me make it bigger. So the two options that is given in the question is that either we have to buy a small van or we have to buy a medium van or to buy a large van. So these are the options. So what I've done is I've written the options. First. Then there are few possibilities. So the possibility are there will be a demand of 120 crates 
and also there will be a demand of 190 grades. So this will be possibilities. In the question, we have also been told that the probability of higher demand, which was 190, is 0 0.6. So this will be probability. And remember that the sum of probability should always be equal to 1. So make it equal to 1, that means the probability of lower demand, which was 120, is 0 0.4. Okay, so I have three options, three options and two possibilities. So I have to prepare six different possible outcomes. Okay, six. Now to prepare a profit table, I will do it turn by turn. So for example, for this situation, for this situation, I will put my feet in a situation where I have buyed a small van and the demand was 120. Okay? So I will calculate the value in the situation where my, I have purchased a small van and my demand was 120. Let's work this out. Let's work this out. So small when demand one twenty. So there will be sales. Then there is a variable cost. Then there is a cost of goodwill. There is a depreciation cost. So these are the income and cost that are provided. Now as far as sales is concerned, I will be selling 100 units at a price of 10 I guess. The selling price was how much? Yes, it was 10. And the variable cost was 4. Okay? Now, why 100? This is because although we have a demand of although we have a demand of 120 but from a small van I only have the capacity of 100 crates only. So, I can only sell 100 crates, not 120. Okay, my variable cost will be equal 100 into 4. I will lose a goodwill and in case I will lose the goodwill, it will cost me $100. And the depreciation cost will be how much? For small van, the depreciation is how much the depreciation is? It is 200. So in this situation, my profit will be sales minus variable cost minus goodwill minus depreciation cost. So it will be 300. So I will just refer it equal 300. Okay. Now let's analyze this one. When I have bought a small van and the demand is 190. Okay. One ninety. I'm just copying and pasting it. So first of all, 
if my demand is 190 and i have bought a small van my sales will still be 100 units and the selling price is 10 my variable cost will be same 100 into 4 my good i will lose a goodwill of 100 dollar and as for a small van is concerned my depreciation will be 200 so i will still have a profit of 3 Okay. Now let's discuss this situation in which I have bought medium van and my demand is 120. Let's discuss what happened over there. What will happen over here? So I'm writing. medium when and demand is 190 now in this situation what will happen to my sales i will be able to sell 120 units because my capacity is 150 and the demand is 120 so i can sell 120 units. Okay, my selling price is 10, so it will be 1200. My variable cost will be 120 into 4 into how much? It has said that when I have a spare capacity, my variable cost will be reduced by 10%. So my variable cost will be 90% in this case. This is because I have a medium van with the capacity of 150, but my demand is 120. So there is a capacity of 30 more credits. And in such situations, the question has told me that the variable cost will be 10% lower. So this will be variable cost. I will not lose any goodwill because no customer will be lost. And the depreciation cost is 300. So my profit will be, what I will do, I will copy and paste it. It will be 460. Similarly, for a medium van, I should have worked it out over here. Now, for the medium van and my demand is 190, what will happen? I will then have a sales of as usual 120. My variable cost will be 120 into 4 into 90%. I will not lose any goodwill. Sorry, I have done a mistake. As far as medium man is concerned, I will now be able to sell 150 units because my capacity is now increased to 150. And the selling price is 10 dollars. On that 150 units, my variable cost will be 150 into 4. I will lose a goodwill in this situation and my depreciation is 300. So my profit will be $500 if I bought a medium van and my demand is 190 Thank you, Hamza. Yes. And Asad, thank you. Now, similarly, what if I buy a large van? If I buy a large man. Now in this situation, my sales will be 120 at $10 price. My variable cost will be 120 into 4 into 90%. I will not lose any goodwill 
and my depreciation will be 400 because the depreciation of large bank is 400. So my profit will be 360. Similarly, it will be for if I bought large bank and my demand is 190 then I will be able to cook up with 190 units my variable cost will be 190 into 4 into 90 percent because I still have the capacity I will not lose any goodwill and my depreciation cost is 400 so my profit in this situation will, will be 860 so now I will put all my workings in this form So I have referred all my working group. Have you seen that? Large man demand of 120, the profit was 368. So here it is. So this is how I make a profit table. Okay. Now let's talk about the expected value technique. So to calculate the expected value, the formula will be probability into data. So I will multiply the expected profit with the respective probability and then will sum. It. So let's apply the calculation of expected value in this. And let me remove these signs for you so that you can clearly view the values. Now, for the calculation of expected value, I'm I will be using the color of red so that you can understand it or differentiate between the profit and the calculation of expected value. So what I do, I will first multiply the value with the respective probability. The same thing I will be doing for the demand of one night. And then what I do, I will, the expected value will be the sum of both of these. So it will be 180 plus 120. So the expected value is 300. Okay. Similarly, we can do such calculation for medium man. So it will be 468 multiplied by 0 0.4 and 500 multiplied by 0 0.6. So when I total it, the answer will be 487.2. And finally, we can also calculate it for large van. So it will be 0.4 into 368 and 816 into 0.6. So this will be 636.8. Now, based on expected value, I will choose the highest among these because this will give me the highest profit, highest expected profit. So, based on expected value, I will choose the large man. This will be my decision. This will be my decision. So, what would have happened? Okay. So please review the advantages and disadvantages of using expected value as decision technique.
just read out that. Now let's see the risk-based decisions. So the first decision is maximum. Maximum is the decision rule that is used by the risk-averse decision makers. Risk-averse decision makers. And the basic premise is maximize the minimum returns. Now to solve it, first of all, we will be looking at returns. So this will be my first step. Secondly, I will be choosing minimum. And finally, I will be using the maximum one. So if it is in the similar question, I have to use maximum. Let's choose another color so that you can clearly view that. In maximum, the first thing is you have to identify the profits. So we already had created a profit table. We already had created a profit table and the profits are in black color, which is 300, 500, 816, etc. Now what I do, in each of the options, I will choose the minimum one. So 300 will be the minimum one in small van. The minimum value for medium van is 300. Sorry, it is 500. And for large van, it is 368. Sorry, it is 468, not 500. 500 is the maximum one. Now, among these, I will choose the maximum one, which is 468. So, based on maximum decision rule, I will choose medium van. Or the risk averse decision maker will choose medium van. The other decision is Maximax. And in Maximax, we will be, this is the decision that is used by the risk seeking decision makers. And in that, we will maximize the maximum return. So once again, calculation of return will be part one. Then maximum choosing maximum value will be part two. And then maximizing, it will be part three. So if I have to make a decision based on maximax, let's choose one another color. Let's choose green. So first of all, we have to calculate the returns, that is profits and that what we had already calculated. Now in each option, we have to choose the maximum profit figure, which is 300 for small van, 500 for medium and 816 for large. Now out of these three, I will be choosing the maximum value, which is 816. So a risk seeker will buy a large van. This seeker will buy a large man. The last technique is minimax regret. And this technique is based on opportunity cost. Remember that this technique is generally used by risk neutral people. And the basic premise over here is minimize the maximum opportunity cost. This opportunity cost is known as regret. So in minimax, first of all, we have to calculate the regret. Then we will be choosing the 
maximum value and finally we will be choosing the minimum value uni lal ji has asked me can we use the formula such as minimum or maximum here such formula is not available in the spreadsheet format so you cannot use that that means first of all we have to calculate the regret okay now as the time has already been over so i will continue from the calculation of regret with the same example from tomorrow i hope you all have joined the group so if you have any question we can have a discussion on the whatsapp group so anyway thank you very much for the day i will be seeing you tomorrow at the same time So thank you very much